We finally have a finalized picture of what Warzone 2 and some of DMZ is going to look like. Call of Duty released an entire blog today detailing all of the changes that they have made for Warzone 2 since we last saw it at Call of Duty Next. And in this video today, I'm going to break down all of these changes, and some of them are really interesting and will definitely shape up how the game plays over the next couple of years. We also got some insights into what DMZ is going to look like, as well as some of the feature sets within it. So to start with, they gave us an overview of some of the more points of interest in the brand new Almazra big map. Now, for those of you who are playing Modern Warfare 2, there are lots of components in Modern Warfare 2 that will feature in Warzone 2. So some of the places and locations are going to feel very familiar and flow very similarly. For example, Albagra Fortress, Embassy, Hydroelectric, Tarak, Saraf Bay, and Said are all featured within Almazra. This means that you'll be able to identify some of these locations alongside more classical locations like, for example, Terminal from the original Modern Warfare 2 and High Rise, which will all also be on the Almazra map as well. The next thing Call of Duty did was clarify the loadout situation, as that was a point of concern and confusing for a lot of people in Call of Duty Next. There are now three ways to obtain your loadout within Warzone 2 with a shop, a actual drop event, and also strongholds and black sites, and all of these have pros and cons. Through the shop system, you can only actually purchase your primary weapon from your created loadout. So you won't get perks, you won't necessarily get equipment, and you also won't necessarily get everything that you wanted, just your primary weapon. Now, every single match will feature a public loadout drop event, where, as per usual in Warzone 1, loadouts will drop across the entire map for people to utilize. The spin and catch this time around though is that these are not assigned to your individual squads, but rather can be accessed by any player, which means that drops and loadout drops in general are going to become much more competitive and fighting and competing over drops is going to be a really big core component of the game and actually should genuinely make the game more interesting. And then of course there are strongholds and black sites, which are AI defended areas, and AI will only feature in these locations. There is the possibility that there could be uh, some even more advanced AI, such as armored AI, a juggernaut, potentially even vehicles for all we know at this point in time, and these will be protected by the AI. But you can get a loadout drop from these locations by taking the risk and gambling at them. Warzone 2 is now moving to a brand new looting system featuring backpacks, which will also be a part of DMZ. Previously, you would drop everything you had on the floor. Now, you will drop a backpack and your primary weapon, which means that a player can take your primary weapon quickly if they need to, but will have to go into your backpack directly to loot other items. This also implies that there will be limited capacities to these backpacks, meaning that you might have to start thinking about your inventory management if you want to take things like armor plates, ammunition, ammunition types, you might have to start getting a little bit more specific with this. I'm sure this is going to be a new learning curve and hopefully it doesn't slow down the experience massively, but it does look like it will be an interesting system, and it definitely will clear up some of the cluttered floor loot that we've seen from Warzone 1, where multiple items stack on top of each other, which make it really, really challenging. Unfortunately, in this blog post, they've decided to stick with the 2v2 gulag, which seemingly was very confusing, but it has had some changes. Now, yourself, another player, and another random duo are going to spawn into the Gulag in a 2v2 environment where all of you are going to receive some kind of predefined loadout, and this will feature a pistol or a shotgun, as well as a lethal and tactical grenade. With allegedly more highly effective weapons spawning in the center or in risk locations around this Gulag. Now, partway through the Gulag, there will be a Jailer which appears which, if you kill the Jailer, sends all four players back to the Gulag. So, effectively, the two teams inside the Gulag could theoretically work together to try and take down the Jailer, so all of them respawn, uh, but I imagine in practical terms things will get a lot more messy. I don't think this is a good system. I am a little bit disappointed that they didn't revert the Gulag, um, if they wanted to have a system whereby people would just respawn, it would simply just be better to have a more traditional gulag, but maybe make it a 1v1v1v1, and the first two who live go through, or three out of four of the players survive, rather than having this weird 2v2 dynamic plus a jailer. 
For those of you who were concerned about AI, the next big change is that they've been massively scaled back in Battle Royale and will only appear at Strongholds, Black Sites, and Gulags during the overtime segment where the Jailer appears. Now, this is a pretty interesting setup and I'm glad that we're going to be seeing this change. It ultimately means that you will only find AI at locations where you're actively hunting for things for your game. So you'll only find them if you're trying to quickly get a loadout drop straight away from something like a stronghold, or if you're trying to get a weapon blueprint from a black site. Black sites and strongholds are effectively the same kind of thing, and AI will be present in both of these locations, but they serve slightly different purposes. It appears as though black sites will be hosting things like weapon blueprints, potentially camos, potentially skins, uh, and this will likely intersect with the DMZ setup especially as well but you will not find AI throughout the map in Warzone 2, only at those specific locations. It's also alleged that these black sites, alongside offering weapon blueprint rewards, will also give you even more valuable in-match items. Now, we don't know what this is just yet. It could, for example, uh, be very similar to what we've seen in the past with the vaults, where you get something like foresight, or potentially something like specialist tokens could be available in these locations. There are a couple of quickfire features that Call of Duty lists here. Some of them are already you know about, some of them are brand new. So for example, the circle collapse being split into three is now possible in Warzone 2. Proximity chat, which has already been confirmed, is something which is definitely there for launch. But then there are some slightly new features which are a little bit weird. For example, assimilation. And this is something which is specific to DMZ, but can occur in special Battle Royale playlists where you have the choice to join up with enemy operators and form a larger squad. Now, we don't know how the UI or the interface for this is going to work, but effectively, by the looks of things, you're going to have the ability in DMZ and in certain Battle Royale playlists to tag team with other squads in order to fight opponents. Now, I imagine this won't be in any of the basic default Warzone 2 playlists. It's going to be like a special limited time mode. But in DMZ, this is something that you can do at any given point. So if there are two or three of you in a DMZ squad and you bump into another squad of two, by using your proximity chat, theoretically, you can squad up with those guys, assimilate into one large squad and then extract together, which is a really interesting feature and something we haven't seen before. Next up is Interrogation, which features in BR and in DMZ, which basically means that if you find a downed opponent, you'll have the ability to sort of shake them up a little bit, steal a tablet off of them, and potentially find their enemy teammate locations and call them out to your friendlies. This is a little bit like some of the uh, mechanics you see in Rainbow Six Siege, where I believe it's Caviera or Cavera has the ability to interrogate opponents to identify enemy locations on the map. There is also a full list of vehicles available in Warzone 2, including a heavy chopper, a Hummer electric vehicle, an ATV, a UTV, a hatchback, SUV, a cargo truck, a light helicopter, a rib boat, an armored patrol boat, and also the ability to fuel up vehicles with a gas station mechanic. So you will run out of fuel and you will have to fuel these vehicles up in order to use them over an extended period of time. Now there's going to be a full blog release for DMZ next week, but it's said alongside BR, Solos, Duos, Trios and Quads, Warzone 2 will feature DMZ, which is an open world narrative focused extraction mode where operator squads will have free reign to complete faction based missions, take on side objectives, engage enemy operators or AI combatants and search for valuable items all whilst fighting towards surviving an extraction or exfiltration. Oh, and during Season 1, Warzone 2.0 is going to get a limited time third-person playlist, which is going to be really cool and will be part of the weekly rotation of playlists in Season 1 for Warzone 2.0. At the end of this blog post, it was also identified that Warzone 1.0 that we've currently been playing is being relaunched as Call of Duty Warzone Caldera, and that the Rebirth Island map and the Fortune's Keep map will no longer be a part of Warzone 1. The Warzone 1 servers will also be shutting down at 8am Pacific time on November 16th and will be relaunching on November 28th at 10am Pacific, meaning that just Caldera is going to be left and there's going to be an extended period during the Warzone 2 release where Warzone 1 is completely gone. A final couple of notes, and not all of this is necessarily Warzone related or DMZ related, but we have an idea on the new weapons. The Victus XMR sniper rifle is coming in, the Bass P SMG Bruin Ops platform, the Chimera assault rifle platform, 
and the M13B assault rifle is also coming in. The battle pass is also being shaken up a little bit, and there are of course new operators coming, including Gaz, Neymar, Pogba, and Messi. But these I don't think are necessarily important. So that's everything coming for Warzone 2 and for DMZ that we know so far. Hopefully this sheds a light on all of the changes that have been made, and hopefully it gives you a better idea of what Warzone 2 is going to look like. But I hope this video helped, and if it did, subscribe, drop a like, and I'll catch you in the next one.